What's going on, y'all? What it is? So let's go ahead and slide on this topic. And I want to talk about this Cassie, Kim Porter, and Diddy situation yet again. But before we get knee deep into that, I do want to discuss the fact that a guy by the name of Roger Bond, who used to work security for Diddy, basically came out and confirmed everything that Cassie said in regards to the lawsuit where Cassie implemented that Diddy was putting paws on her. Now, before we get into this video clip about what Roger Bond had to say about the situation, you know, I want to discuss this real briefly. Like when a victim of SA always come forth, some of you always ask, like, why do they want to file a complaint now? Why didn't they file the complaint back then? But I believe that people who were involved or around the situation should get that same type of energy because they're a bunch of enablers. And in this particular situation, no matter how you slice it or dice it, and no matter what Roger has to say about the situation right now, he allowed it to continue to happen. Even though he told Diddy to chill out and stop putting paws on Cassie, you know, he really didn't come forth and just put it out there because he could have stopped Diddy in his tracks way back then, but nobody elected to. So I'm just saying, like, I understand that the victims, you know, some of them don't have the fortitude to come forth. They're the ones that have been violated, right? So we can't tell people when to come forth with their truth. But what we can do is acknowledge the people that witnessed their truth and allowed it to continue to happen. And they didn't step up to the plate and say a damn thing either. And when it comes to dudes, especially within the hip hop culture, they always use that same excuse. I don't want to snitch. I don't want to be looked at as a snitch. Man, you're saving somebody's life. Why do you care about what people think about you in regards to your character? Because you chose to step up and do the right thing. It just it's just really crazy in my estimation but anyway guys check out this clip and i'll be right back okay so y'all remember when i was reading the official court documents the other day and we got to page 14 number 67. in the car leaving the club mr combs miss ventura pushing her into the corner of the vehicle and on her face mr combs security staff roger bonds pictured above tried to stop the was unable to de-escalate the situation when I was just doing some research on Erica Kennedy, guess what I came upon? An incog posted on LSA in 2009. Apparently, they were at the club the same night that this went down. They wrote, last night, Diddy and Cassie were out at a club in Los Angeles. Cassie apparently was chopping it up with some producer a little bit too long for Diddy's taste. Diddy goes over to her, grabs her arm, and starts going off on her in front of the dude. At this point, they proceed to leave the club. They get in a limo and Cassie is mouthing off and bops Diddy upside the back of the head. Of course, all hell breaks loose. Diddy smacks her in the face and is shaking her and shit. His bodyguard tries to intervene, telling Diddy to chill. Now we know exactly who that is. They continue arguing all the way back to the house in the limo. Once they get there, Cassie runs and grabs her stuff like she's leaving and goes walking off down the street. Diddy goes after her and proceeds to her to the ground, at which point he her a few times in the face. The bodyguard pulls him off of her. Cassie's crying and bleeding and is taken to the hotel by one of the assistants. The next day, Diddy has one of his assistants go on a $20,000 shopping spree for gifts and has them sent to Cassie's room. Now, I guess Mr. Bonds did not like his name being thrown in the mix, so he takes it to Instagram on an account that you can clearly see he's not all that active on. He posts on his page and his story. This is not meant to be threats or snitching or anything like that against Cassie or Diddy or anyone else. This is me telling my truth as I truly remember it for two reasons only. First, because I have four daughters. So on all dudes, my truth as I seen it, saw it, and was involved with it for years. He goes on in a caption to say, I'm willing to tell my truth because for so many years I was quiet. Nothing matters now but family. So it looks like he is attempting to clear his own name and also he is um supporting cassie and saying that she's not lying but I mean, clearly at this point we know this i don't know ne i never thought she was lying but it just seems like there's just so much evidence being piled on piled on piled on like i don't see diddy being able to wiggle his way out of this one it seems like people are starting to choose sides all right, so you guys just saw and heard that. And listen, I'm glad that Roger came out and showed some type of support for Cassie, but I don't think that he would have said anything if Cassie hadn't filed this lawsuit. Just my personal opinion, right? But I will say that it's clear and evident that he must not have gotten the NDA that Diddy sent because he's definitely talking. Or maybe he just disregarded the NDA and said, hey, I'm going to speak my truth. But anyway, let's go ahead and transition to this Aaron Hall situation, right? So another woman came out and said that Diddy and Aaron Hall basically took advantage of 
of her one night and they took turns doing it. I mean, this was just so shocking to hear. And so, but it's believable. And so basically what I want to do right here is I want to play you guys this clip and then I'll be right back to expound on this topic further. Okay, so now it's a third victim and this time Aaron Hall is involved. So the plaintiff Jane Doe alleges that P. Diddy and Aaron Hall took turns with her and her friend after an event at Uptown Records in the 1990s. So Diddy was hit with a third lawsuit alleging assaults under the Adult Survivors Act that expired after Thanksgiving. The new complaint from an anonymous accuser alleges Combs and singer-songwriter Aaron Hall took turns the plaintiff and her friend in 1990 or 91 and that Diddy turned violent during a rage days later. In the filing obtained by Rolling Stone, Jane Doe alleges that she and her friend met Diddy and Hall at an event hosted by MCA Records at the company's office in New York. Combs and Hall were very flirtatious and handsy with Jane Doe and her friend, offering them drinks throughout the night. As the event was winding down, Combs and Hall allegedly invited the women back to Hall's apartment for an after party. While at Hall's apartment, Jane Doe was offered more drinks and was coerced into having sex with Combs. After Combs finished doing his business, Jane Doe laid in bed shocked and traumatized. As she was in the process of getting dressed, Hall barged in the room and pinned her down and forced Jane Doe to have sex with him also. The complaint says Jane Doe quickly got dressed and fled from Hall's residence after the alleged it alleges that she later spoke to her friend and learned the other woman had been forced to have a with Combs and Hall also in another room. A couple of days later, after the alleged assaults, Combs allegedly visited the home where Jane Doe and her friend were staying and turned violent. He was irate and began assaulting and choking Jane Doe to the point that she passed out. Combs was searching for Jane Doe's friend because he was worried that she would tell the girl he was with at the time what he and Hall had done to them. Alongside Hall and Combs, the suit names MCA Music Entertainment as defendants. Reps for Hall and Combs did not immediately return requests for comment on Friday. The lawsuit filed in New York County Supreme Court alleges Jane Doe informed her close friend and family about what occurred. It claims that she sought medical treatment to heal from the trauma visited upon her by Combs and Hall. See how this man got away with all of this for so long. All right, so you guys just saw and heard that, and I believe it because there's a Vlad interview that Aaron Hall did that's floating around all over social media, and I can't play it here because Vlad will flag your channel, right, if you play any of his content. But basically, Aaron Hall was speaking in detail saying that Puff has been to his apartment, and Puff has seen him give a girl back shots before, right? I'm paraphrasing here. And he said that Puff has seen the wood, basically seen him in action. So it's not above the realm of possibility of what this girl is claiming happened to her. Now, of course, Diddy and Aaron Hall's camp have nothing to say about this because Girl, you know it's true. Now, another thing I want to point out is the fact that y'all remember in Cassie's lawsuit, she pointed out the fact that Diddy liked to be around men who had BBCs. So that probably explains why he loved being around Aaron Hall. He had an infatuation, infatuation for Aaron Hall and also the women that they were seeing as well. So let's just look at that in its totality. Maybe something between Diddy and Aaron Hall transpired on an intimate level that we don't know about and it's not above the realm of possibility either. And just for context, I just wanna say that I can care less what Aaron Hall is working with. I'm just speaking on it because during the Vlad video or the Vlad interview that Aaron did, he was gloating about his size and he was saying that he liked to show other dudes that are not fortunate to have the size that he has what he's working with but anyway let's go ahead and get into the information that was sent to me now i'm going to be paraphrasing a lot of things i hope you guys read along with me so you can actually see what it says and it says here hey what's going on you still with family did you get my text so brother i just want to enlighten you on what the f is going on cassie's parents are pushing for federal charges to be bought against diddy in the state of california for the years of accuse inflicted upon their daughter cassie has fled back to her hometown of new london connecticut and has 24 hour security monitoring her place of residence i'm told that there has been talks of putting cassie and her entire family in a witness protection program in the next coming weeks after federal charges are filed against diddy cassie's husband alex has reported to federal officials that he and his entire family has been receiving 
bets after the conclusion of his wife and Diddy reaching a settlement. Cassie has said to already have put a will in place to ensure that in the event that something happens to her, that her family would be taken care of. Cassie also says that it was her intent to expose Diddy publicly to garner her safety to some degree rather than settling quietly. Cassie still feels as long as Diddy is free that he will retaliate in some way, shape or form. She feels that the one thing you don't do is give Diddy time to plot and plan because he is extremely dangerous in that way. It's also been brought to my attention that before Kim moved out to California after Diddy robbed her by buying her a mansion, giving her $2 million and showering her with other materialistic things, that Kimora begged Kim not to move into a home that Diddy purchased for her and also not to accept anything from him for that matter because it was a form of having total control to manipulate her and watch her every move. Instead, Kimora suggested that Kim and her twin daughters move in with her, but Kim chose to move into the home that Diddy bought her for the sake of the twins, which ended up being a recipe for disaster. Cassie also told her lawyers that she was preg at seven different times and was forced to have an AB and even though she never wanted kids with Diddy or anyone else that she was forced to be intimate with, it's been echoed that Cassie was worried about her ability to conceive later on in life because she always wanted to get married and have kids. She thought that having so many ABs that somehow it would affect her fertility. So she secretly tried to have her eggs frozen in an effort to have an IVF done later on, but Diddy found out about the appointment and had it canceled. Cassie did not want that information leaked into the lawsuit for some reason, according to another lawyer from a different law firm who had direct access to Cassie's information because of his relationship with the law firm that represented Cassie. Something else that has been confirmed, and this is coming from the vanilla guy that Kim was secretly seeing before she passed, who is a high-ranking tech official that works in Silicon Valley that Kim had recordings of certain male artists getting their back blown out and many private parties that Diddy had thrown and at least two of them were forced into performing humiliating S favors that involved yellow water. All right, guys, pay attention, yellow water, I'm paraphrasing there. And one of them were in tears during the process. I will tell you over the phone who they are. Lastly, it was exposed that Kim said that the price of Diddy selling his soul to the devil, that certain people connected to him were feist, including Biggie. The whole West versus East Coast beef was all reckless and baseless propaganda to cover up what was really going on. Diddy had a debt to pay to the devil at the expense of Biggie losing his life. The one thing that remains a fact is that Diddy purposely set Biggie up. Kim also said that Diddy had to choose between his mom and Biggie. And she has Diddy admitting that during a conversation back in 1998. And we still see that Diddy's mom is still living and thriving at 80 years old. It's a lot, man. Are you going to invite that lawyer on your channel to do an interview? I think you should. I think it would really send shockwaves throughout the entire world. Hit me up when you get this, bro. One. All right, so you guys just heard that and to protect the integrity of my platform, I will say that the information that I just conveyed to you is all alleged, but at the end of the day, like I've been telling you guys for the last past week or two, that this information is coming from a solidified source. Now, I will say this, I don't want to mention any names, but I did talk to him. And when I say him, I'm talking about the individual that's been giving me this information. So I basically said, who was left in tears and information within this video. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until next time, peace.